Rachel. Oh, I'm so. Hi, Jimmy. Uh, first of all, before we even get into this, I want to thank you for coming on, but also thank you for for just continuing to do your job and and, and showing up and 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 speaking to the public because we we need you and uh, it's important and I know it's how hard it is with everything in the pandemic and. You just showed up, and it was awesome what you're doing. So thank you. Well, you know what? The public needs you, too. I mean, we do different things, but this thing that we do where we communicate to lots of people through the magic of television um, is a thing that people want and need, and we're blessed to be able to do it through technology in a way that a lot of people can't do their jobs safely, and, and we can. And I, I feel like more privileged than ever to have this kind of a job. Uh, you've been covering the DNC with uh, Joy Reid and Nicole Wallace. You guys are a great team. Uh, I think we had some big highlight moments. I mean, uh, uh, the, the first night was, I think, Michelle Obama's speech was pretty flawless. Yeah. I mean, she's Michelle Obama and you're not. Like, there's nobody like her in the world. She's got this sort of centered wisdom that... I think I feel like she, she moves people in a way that other people don't. And so for her to say, listen, I hate politics, but I've also seen the presidency up close. And if you think it can't get worse, I'm here to tell you that it can. That's like send a chill through me. Yeah. Then her husband speaks two nights later and basically warns that the American democ that American democracy could end now. Yeah, um, well that this, this could be the end for well us. And to hear him say that he's Mr. Hope and Change. Like that was very unsettling to me. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I, I got that too. I, I was, I think I was more emotional. I mean, just hearing him talk and you're like, I haven't heard a speech like this in so long. He's so good at this. And you go like, oh, this is so, I hope everyone out there sees this. I hope every young person sees this who's going to vote or anyone thinking about voting or what it means or doesn't mean to them, or I'm not going to vote this year. Or, I don't know. I don't care. If you watch this, you go like, wait, what, what was I thinking? This is important. Yeah. This is our right. And he's, because he is, I mean, his brand, his whole political message is about optimism, right? It is about what America can be and what we, and it, you know, the arc of the moral universe bending toward justice and all those things. For him to come out with a warning, to say, this is really bad. We're really at risk. Our country might not be a democracy anymore, depending on what happens in the next election, because the people in power now are happy to do away with democracy as our form of government. I mean, hearing that from some jerk like me, fine. Like, <laughs> that's, but hearing that from Barack Obama, who is not that guy, uh, it's just, I just feel like, a, separate and apart from how well they're running the convention, those two speeches from Michelle and Barack Obama are going to stick with me and I think stick with a lot of people for a long time. Yeah, um, I think he did a great job. I thought Kamala Harris equally, if not better at holding, I mean, that was a tough, you got to follow Barack Obama? Barack Obama. <laughs> no, <laughs> never, ever, 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 ever. It's the number ever one let rule. Let anybody make you follow Barack Obama. That's the, I, that's the number one rule. That's where you just go, yeah, I'm, I'm good. But yeah, I mean, essentially, he functioned as kind of the nominating speech for Kamala Harris. He referred to her. He didn't make his speech about her, but he referred to her in the speech as my friend. And they are actually friends. They've actually had a really long political alliance and, and know each other. And I think people who know that give it some, some heft. But yeah, I mean... It's also true that having a woman of color on the ticket for the first time ever gives you chills. And, you know, for the Democratic Party who've had black women, women of color in general, and black women in particular, saving their bacon for generations now. Like, no black women voters, no black women doing the work of the Democratic Party, no Democratic politicians. To finally have an African-American woman holding that position and poised to take that leadership role in the party, it's so overdue and it just feels good. I mean, seeing her approval ratings among Democratic voters is up in, you know, north of 90 percent. Like, oh, right, you know, good, good choice, Joe. But then at the end, when she said, you know, in not too many years from now, people will look back on this and they will ask us about what it meant to be alive in this time. And they will not ask us how we felt. They will ask us and we will tell them what we did. I was like, oh. I felt like, I was like, I feel like future me is judging current me right now. And I'm in trouble because I'm, whatever I'm supposed to be doing, I'm definitely not doing enough. Uh, and that, I mean, that's, that's what you want from a leader, right? Is to call on your own moral conscience, for, to call on you to look inside yourself and ask yourself and ask 
future self. Ask future you who you want to have been in this moment. I, I thought it was the whole night was like, whew. Uh, yeah. I, I, I wanted to talk to you about also, you, you had the biggest interview, I think, in the history of MSNBC. If I may be wrong, uh, let me know. But I mean, uh, in interviewing, is it Donald Trump's niece? Uh, when she had that giant book, you got the interview and you crushed it. Uh, when you when you knew you had the interview, did you go like, okay, focus up, what are we gonna talk about? Or was it like getting into the mind, like finally, can I just get in there and tell me, talk to me about this person? Well, two things about that. First of all, I had no idea that so many people were gonna watch that interview. Even when I finished the interview, I was like, oh, I wonder if we'll get a little bump from this. Like, <laughs> you know, sometimes you do a show and you're like, that was an okay show. And then it like, turns out to be a blockbuster. Yeah. I had no idea, yeah. no idea at all. But yeah, I mean, she's the story to tell. And that, that interview didn't have anything to do with me. It was just that people wanted to hear what she had to say. She's got a really unique perspective on, on the president and what she thinks is wrong with him. Uh, what, what was the one takeaway you think you go like, well, if anyone heard anything, you should hear what she said about this? I think the thing that sort of chilled me the most and that I've thought about the most since the interview is when she said something that actually was very similar to what Michael Cohen said when he did his, uh, his congressional testimony before yeah. he went to prison, which is that she said that she has absolutely no doubt that um, he, he, will, he will not peacefully, uh, not agree to the peaceful transfer of power um, at the end of his term if he loses. And I don't know if that's true. He's certainly been stoking that fear among people. But for her to say, listen, I've known him since I was a kid. I've known him since I was a toddler. And I can tell you from a life's worth of observation and every other hard thing I've ever seen him go through, there's no way. Um, wow. And it's I feel like a lot of political observers say that and we sort of game it out and think about, well, what options will there be then for the country if a person doesn't want to do this? But to hear somebody who like knows him just say that flat out without any equivocation was kind of rattled my teeth a little bit. Well, well, you probably heard the rumor too that some people say, well, I think he might even just quit and say like, nope, I'm out. I already got the win. I don't want to ever get a loss on my name. Uh, this whole yeah. thing's rigged. And that's it. Bye, guys. That's this country's. You messed up, and this whole thing's rigged. Have you? You must have talked I don't about know. that. Yeah. I mean, he. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. He seems like he's running. I don't think that uh, if he quit right now, he would be elevating Mike Pence to the office, which is something that I'm. I can't really imagine him. Like it doesn't. It's not like it doesn't have no. It doesn't have consequences. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, right. I didn't uh, think about and that. And then if Pence won the election because Trump quit and gave him. Then it, I mean, that would be a mess for him too. I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Uh, uh -huh.